These are corporate assets, and if we don't secure them properly, they can quickly become liabilities. Today we're going to go over Meraki Systems Manager and show you how to secure PCs, Macs, iPhones, and Android devices. I'm going to do a complete walkthrough of it. Let's get started. So the first thing you see when you log into Meraki Systems Manager is this Let's Get Started page. And from here, this is where you're going to initially come in to set a couple things up. Um, you can see that for iOS devices, Windows devices, Mac devices, I've got these already set up for Android and Chrome. Uh, it says action required because there's a little bit of pre-work to get these working. Um, I've done the pre-work already for the iOS portion here. Uh, I'll take you guys through how to set up iOS devices. So in this tutorial, we'll do iOS, and I'm going to also show you guys Windows devices. The rest of them, they're all pretty much the same, but those are the devices I have in front of me, so those are the ones I'm going to show you guys. So to get started, typically this would say action required when you guys are new here coming in. So click on this, and it'll take you to the next page. When you click on that iOS device here, it's going to take you to this MDM settings page. And this is where you set up that APN stuff that we need to, to get from Apple. And it's actually the same page. We see the Android stuff at the top here, uh, Apple MDM right here. So I'm going to show you guys how to get the Apple stuff configured. First thing we need to do is download the CSR, and then we need to upload it to Apple. And then we get a cert back from them, and you know we, we push it back over to here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download this CSR file. And I'm just going to put it in my downloads folder here. Then we need to take that and we need to go over to this link here and open this up in a new tab. And then from here we need to log in. So once you log in here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a certificate. I'm going to click on this link here. Yes, I've done all this. We'll accept it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose that file that we had in our downloads folder. So downloads right there. Open and upload. Now we've uploaded to them. I'm going to say download here. And we're going to save this back in the same folder. And now I've got that file. So we're going to go back to our Meraki page here. And we need to put in the Meraki ID that we used to generate this. Mine was my username. And we need to find that file we just, we just did. And it's right there. Open it up. And that's pretty much it. We're going to hit save here. And now it says your settings have been updated. And you can see all the information that Apple has added right here. So now at this point, if we went back to Systems Manager and Clients, if you previously saw action required here for iOS devices, now you should see ready to add devices. Okay, so let's click on iOS devices and we'll start adding some Apple iPhones in here. When we click on this, the first thing you'll see here is there's a couple different ways to actually enroll the iOS devices into Meraki Systems Manager. Uh, one way is to open up this web page browser here and to type in this unique code. And, you know, that's what I'll test here for you guys. Another way is to do it through this QR code over here. Uh, there is an app that you could download from the App Store, and I'll show you guys that after. But basically, if I don't have the app, I can still do a lot with the device, but the app allows me to do just a little bit more. And when we get into actually doing the configuration here, I'll kind of explain what that is, and you, you guys will be able to see it. So on our iPhone here, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Safari and we're going to go to this web page, m.meraki.com, and it's going to ask us to enter in this user ID, so 0268041030, and we're going to now register this device, and it's going to download the profile, we say accept, we install it, and in a couple seconds, it says verified enrolling certificate. We'll install it. And we're going to trust it. And now we're done. So now this device should show up in my Meraki dashboard. So if I go back to Systems Manager and I go to Clients here, you should now see my iPhone. 
We could tell that it's an iPhone 6S, gives me the location based on the GPS and the IP address that it has of it. And I can click on the device and we can take a look at some of the details of this device. So it's giving me a basic uh, idea of where this device is. Again, this is based off IP address. If you take a look here, um, I can actually get the GPS coordinates of this phone, but that would be one of those things that requires the uh, application to be downloaded onto the iPhone. We can take a look at how long it's been online for. We can go in here and we could do things like erase the entire device if I wanted to. I could lock the device if I wanted to, clear the passcode, and we could set some provisions in this. Now that I've got one iPhone in here, let's go ahead and create a profile. So that way, while I continue to add iPhone devices in here, they all ingest the same profile and all the rules of the organization. So in order to do that, go on the left side here to Systems Manager. Under MDM, we're going to click Settings. And we're going to create here a new profile. So in order to do that, just click the plus button here. New Meraki Manage Profile is fine. We're going to call it iPhone and give it a description if you like and then that's pretty much with that now we're going to start adding some of those settings in here and what by settings what i mean is this is where we come in to add restrictions uh privacy stuff if it's a, an apple device and then things like passcodes so how many digits in, in a passcode uh, when the stuff expires that's how you set all this stuff in here there's there's specific things to Apple and when it comes to AirPlay you can allow it, disallow it. Um, if this was a Windows device you could say like hey I don't want to allow Internet Explorer you can do that all through here. So for example I'll click on restrictions here so you guys can see what some of this stuff is and as my policy, you know, my court policy, I might want to disable the camera. You know maybe this is a top secret government thing and hey no cameras are allowed on premise so when you're in my building, I am going to uncheck the camera here and you have no access to, to your camera. So you can do some of that stuff in here. There is some stuff here too that you'll see iOS restrictions and it has it supervised after it. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff that you can do uh, in here, but the key to this is you need to be enrolled in the Apple DEP program. That's a purchasing program through Apple. Um, you enroll your entire organization into it. It makes rolling out Systems Manager of the iPhones incredibly easy. It, as soon as you purchase the phone, you could automatically push it down to it. I can't do that. I can't show you guys that because I don't have an organization that I can enroll in this. But there's some really cool stuff that you can do in here. Um, you know, for example, if I wanted to, you know, let's say this device wasn't ever leaving my premise and we just wanted to use one app day in and day out, I could actually lock the iPhone down so the only app that appears on the iPhone's front page is that one app that I say that, that that can be allowed. So you can do stuff like that when the device is in supervised mode. Um, this looks fine, you know, we'll just we'll just set save changes for, for this guy here for right now. And let's go in and let's do something with the passcode. So the iPhone that I just set up that we installed the, uh, the profile on right now it doesn't even have a passcode on it. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to say, yeah, okay, well, well simple values, numeric. Uh, let's see, what's the smallest number of passcode? You know, I can do one digit, four digit, six digit, I can go all the way to 14. For this one, I don't know, we'll do nine for the heck of it. And, you know, you could put your time in here, auto lock, never auto lock if you don't want it to auto lock. And we're going to go ahead and we'll save changes here. And it might take a second or two or a minute or two for this profile to get pushed back down to the iPhone. But when it does, if the user has the phone open or the next time they open the phone, they'll get prompted to change this passcode. And I'll show you guys that right now. Okay. So I just opened up my iPhone here and password Passcode is required because we got that push. So I can go ahead in here and say continue. And then you can see it says here enter nine or more characters because we set that minimum passcode length to nine. So for this example, we're going to just do real simple one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click continue. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, since we're using nine digits here for a passcode, uh, you might forget your passcode every once in a while. So I go to log into my phone, and it's asking me for my nine-digit passcode. I don't remember what it is. Was it a bunch of threes, uh, twos in there? Okay. So we can clear the passcode. So to clear the passcode, I can go back to my clients, and I can find the one person that's having issues with it. And I can go down, and where it says clear passcode, I can simply go in here and say clear passcode. Are you sure? Yes. And now the password command has been entered. Again, give it a minute or so to get to the device. And now when we go to open our device, it doesn't ask us for a passcode but it does ask us to re-enter a passcode because we need to set it again. So I hit continue. This time I'll set it so I know it. And if we lock the phone again, it comes back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and now I'm in the phone. So just real, real quick, real simple, you know, how to set the minimum passcode links on here, what to do if someone forgets their passcode. You can do real simple stuff like that in this. Now, I mentioned before that if I don't have the Systems Manager app on the phone, I can only do some of the basic stuff. But let's say I want to get a little more granular to the phone. Let's say I want to see what applications are on the device. Maybe I want to be able to push down applications to the device. That's where we'll need the application on the iPhone. So if I bring my iPhone back up, you guys can simply go to the App Store and you can download Meraki Systems Manager. Open it up. Yes, we'll allow it. And we can say begin enrollment. Now if you guys remember that QR code that was visible before, what I'll do is I'm going to go over to my uh, ad here. MDM, add device. And click on iPhone, iOS, and now I can just scan this QR code here with my phone. This, this will be interesting. So we'll bring that up. Yes, access the camera, and barely gave me two seconds to scan that. And then you say, yes, enroll this device. Continue. Again, we get all these warning pop-ups here. Yes, install it. Enter our nine-digit passcode. Nine and install. Okay, yes, we're going to trust it. And we're all set. Now it's asking us about the location services. Yes, we'll enable that. That way we can get some of the GPS coordinates on it if you want. We'll say always allow. And here's your kind of checkup here. So we're connected, we're enrolled, we're compliant, and we've even got our location history in there as well. So now, if we take a look again at our clients, we can take a look at our iPhone. And we get a much better view of where this device actually is. And now I can also start to see some of the applications that are on this device. And really all I have is one uh, application installed on here, Meraki MDM through iTunes Store. If you guys set any applications that need to be pushed down and they are not in the, on the phone for some reason, uh, they'll show up under missing here. So we just went through adding iPhone devices and getting everything registered in here. Let's switch over now to Windows. There's a lot more that you could do with iOS devices. You could do things like geolocation, geofencing. Um, I'm not gonna walk through that today, but if you guys are interested, I could always do it on their video. So in order to get Windows devices in here, we're gonna go back to our Systems Manager tab on the left side here, and we're gonna go down to Add Devices. What you guys are going to see here, we'll go over to Windows Devices, and this is very similar to the way that we added iOS devices. So, you know, I could go to this web page, I could uh, enter in this network ID, and I can get 
assert push down to the box or profile push down to the box, or I could do the agent, or uh, you know, I could send the link and we can enroll the device that way. I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to install the agent. We'll go right to that this time and we'll show you what that looks like. So I've got it set up on my virtual machine over here and we'll go ahead and we'll install it. And we'll say yes. Take a minute here, finish. Now the one important thing to remember when you get the agent installed in all your laptops and computers out there is you need to reboot the computer. If you don't reboot the computer, you'll miss out on a couple functions, uh, mainly around um, screen sharing or being able to see the screen on there and a remote desktop feature. I'll show you guys what that looks like in a second as soon as this thing reboots here. Okay, so my Windows 10 machine just rebooted, and we'll go ahead and take a look at what it looks like now in the Clients tab. And here we go. We can see that I've got two devices in here now, my iPhone and my desktop here. We'll go ahead and we'll click inside of it. And again, you get some basic information where this device is, this PC that's based off of the IP address that it's getting. Um, we can take a look at some of the processes that are going on here. If I wanted to, maybe someone called up and said, hey, you know, there's something that popped up on my screen. I don't know what it means. I could take a screenshot of the computer here, and it'll take two seconds. So you can say, "Oh, yeah, I was just asking you if you want uh, if you want to use Firefox as your default browser." Next, I can go over to the actual remote desktop, and I can connect to this computer and control things. So, like, well, I'm really not sure. I'd rather if you did it for me. You could say, "Okay, let me connect here." This takes a, a minute or two. This is uh, this is a beta feature right now, but it'll go in and establish a connection, and then we can log into this PC whenever this comes up. We give it a second here, and there we go. So it's up and running. Now I'm in this computer. We've got a shared session going on between the user and the administrator, and I could say, yeah, you know what? We're gonna let that happen. We're gonna uncheck that, and then use Firefox as my default browser, and that saves it, saves it in the settings there. Okay, guys. So that's it. I mean, there's a lot more that I could have went into here. I didn't really expect this video to go as long as it did. Um, there's a ton of more features that I wanted to show everybody, but I didn't want to make this too long. So. If you guys have any more questions or want me to do something else, I can always go over this again or pick out a subsection of this product if you guys want. Uh, if you like this video, please like it and always, as always, subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.